Hello, welcome back to another Modern Soccer Coach Breakdown. Again, we're going to talk about some ideas around pre-season planning. One of the potential challenges that possession-based coaches face when they're planning their pre-season is that when they're putting all the possession work together, usually a really good teaching tool is the Rondo type exercise, but sometimes it's difficult to generate intensity and physical work around the Rondo if the players are standing quite static. Sometimes that doesn't drive the physical challenges that are replicated in the game and in trying to move the players from general fitness to match fitness, Sometimes there can be a disconnect between the exercises that you put out there that can help a team possess the ball and maybe not transition and deal with the demands of the game. So today we're going to look at three ways that you can potentially move Rondo type exercises into more fitness based exercises and put it all together. If you enjoy it as always please give it a like and a subscribe. Also check out the resources. We've got some pre-season resources for free. We've had hundreds of downloads for the Modern Soccer Coach football fitness exercises. If you haven't got yours yet please check it out below modernsoccercoach.com slash shop. Okay let's go. So the first thing I would do whenever I'm planning pre-season would be to break your rondos down to three types of rondos. Here they are. So the first type of rondo is a pressing rondo. This is where you incentivize the defensive team to win the ball back as quickly as possible, maybe with a scoring system, maybe with many goals. If you also add transitions to these types of exercises, then of course then the possession team has to also do the defensive work which can add a level of fatigue, which can make the possession work a lot more difficult whenever they're being challenged with winning the ball back, having to play a game, trying to regain possession, trying to keep possession, trying to regain possession. So physically that can be a lot more challenging than just keeping, 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 keeping the ball. Here's an example of one of those games from Eric Ten Hag. 5v2 transition game, 10 players organized into two teams of five players. Two 15 by 15 yard grid. Coach starts by playing the ball into one of the grids. Two defenders come across. Becomes a 5v2. The objective for the possession team is to complete three passes and then score in any of the mini goals. If they're successful, they're rewarded a point and they get the ball back. The defensive team are looking to win the ball and then transfer it back to their grid. Once they complete a pass back to their grid, then the rules reverse. Everyone has to move across. The attacking team becomes the defending team. And again, the game becomes quite physically demanding and has that aspect of possession still in there. The next type of rondo is a breakout rondo. This is where you use possession to lead into another phase of the game. So maybe it's a little bit more realistic. You're using possession to build into something else, which requires repositioning, more support play, increased physical demands, and usually intensity with that. Here's an example of a breakout rondo, 6v6, three goals with three goalkeepers, six players inside the rondo area, three defenders in there, three other defenders around each of the outside goals. 6v3, five passes, and then the attackers can break out and go to any goal. Two attacking players can go, one recovering defender can go, so it's a 2v1 that, that quickly turns into a 2v2. The recovering defender then stays and the defender that was there goes in. So you allow defenders to recover, hopefully keeping that intensity high in the middle. Play for three minutes, rotate the team so everyone gets exposure in being a possession and attacking team and then defending as well. And then the third type of rondo is a transfer rondo. Now again, you're moving the ball from one area to the other. But the difference between a transfer rondo and a breakout rondo is that the transfer rondo is typically moving the ball to go and support and then possess the ball again. So it's perfect for a team who likes to move the opponent, unbalance the opponent, create overloads in different areas of the pitch. So again, it's got that physical work in terms of repositioning, going to support. And that work in itself is quite challenging because not only is there a physical part, but you're also moving into a different pressure area, which can be technically challenging as well as physical. Here's an example of that. 5v2, two squares, 4v2 and one square. One player stays on the other side. After five passes, they transfer possession to the other square. 4v4, 
four players go to support, one player stays, you recreate the 4v2. If the defending team win the ball, they score into one of the mini goals. You can add a touch restriction, which means that if the bottom player only has two touches, those supporting players have to get there quick so the ball doesn't stop rolling and you can solve pressure. Really, really good game to prepare for a high-intensity training session. So there you have it, coaches. Three different types of rondo. You've got the pressure one where there's more transitions. You're incentivizing the defensive team. You've got the breakout one where it's a little bit more verticality. You're using possession to try and create an opportunity or create numbers forward. And then you've got the transfer rondo where you're looking at changing possession from one area but keeping the same players to support in both areas. So different physical demands in each one. As always, it depends what you're looking for as a coach. Is a 6v2 rondo useless if they're just standing around? No, it might be a low intensity day. You've got that in pre-season as well, where you have to manage and periodize your work. So every type of rondo has a purpose. My advice would be that when you're planning your pre-season, you're looking for the type of intensity, the type of work, the type of situations that go with your philosophy go with your game model, go with the profile of your players and the profile of your team and putting that all together. The better planning you have around the physical demands and around the type of work you're looking to do tactically, the better chance you have of then closing the gap between the tactical and the physical and the technical and the mental and putting that all together and creating the type of team you want. Usually that's the objective, trying to get that game model in theory, matched up with the work and the physical and the tactical, it takes time, it takes planning, it takes review, it takes a little bit of feedback as well. But that whole process is probably the most enjoyable one for coaches in pre-season. So hope you enjoyed that. If you did and you want more pre-season work, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos. If you want some more pre-season ideas or you want full training session plans, We've got full attacking plans. We've got press and exercises. There's tons of ebooks over a modern soccer coach. You can download them right away. So when you prepare, you can have the work beside you, get some more ideas. I love the whole concept of session design and trying to align that game model tactically with the work on the training pitch. Nothing beats it. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for the support. Please don't forget to give it a like before you leave. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.